terror begins again. US Marine Corps is arguably the best amphibious warfare force in the world. But a new government accountability office report suggests that lack of training may be eroding the Marine's amphibious capabilities. The problem isn't with the Marine amphibious units deployed at sea, which would be at the forefront of the fighting should war erupt in Korea or the South China Sea. The issue is that relentless overseas commitments have strained marine resources so badly that it can't conduct the other training that it needs to maintain its combat edge. A review of readiness data from 2014 to 2016 revealed that Marine Corps units were unable to fully accomplish training on civil operations priorities, according to the GAR report. These shortfalls include home station unit training to support contingency requirements, service level exercises, and experimentation and concept development for amphibious operations. 
The prime reason was lack of enough amphibious ships to sustain overseas deployments and conduct home station training. All 23 marine units interviewed by GAR researchers listed lack of ships as their biggest training problem. The U.S. Navy's fleet of amphibious ships has grown to some 62 in the 1990 to 31 today, so there are plans to add four new vessels by 2024. In addition, 17 of the 23 units complained that they couldn't train because of lack of access to training ranges, especially with units scheduled to deploy getting first crack at training facilities. Almost half said training was hampered by maintenance work on ships, bad weather, or the transit time it took for the amphibious ship to reach the training area. Curiously, only 5 of 23 marine units reported that deployments, or the need to prepare for upcoming deployments, actually affected their training. On the surface, this seems like yet another post-9-11 symptom of too many U.S. military commitments and not enough resources. But Gao also faults the U.S. Marine Corps and Navy for the problem. For example, when Navy amphibious ships are freed up for training, the Marines send whatever units are available rather than those who should get priority. Nor has either service taken advantage of alternatives to the shipping shortage. These alternatives could include utilizing additional training opportunities during an amphibious ship's basic phase of training, using alternative platforms for training, such as marine prepositioning force ships, utilizing smaller navy craft or pierside ships to meet training requirements, and leveraging developmental and operational test events, Gao said. The U.S. Marine Corps is turning to virtual training which would allow units to simulate at least to some degree amphibious training even when ships aren't available. However, Gao faulted the virtual effort for lack of consideration of what tasks Marines would train in, available time for training, and how to measure whether virtual training works. Combined with the Romanians, uh, an inland objective, uh, the main thing that we wanted to do uh, this was just demonstrate our ability to interoperate uh, with a NATO ally. Uh, we were successful at infantry skills training uh, and uh, mill to mill like, engagement in that regard with them, uh, as well as accomplishing our sustainment training. <laughs> Fist, go! 
sides, let's go. Help. Hey, we got go, two down. We're moving, we're moving. Hey. Adam, we're moving. Thank you.